is the Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the Gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Direct us, our Father. In the name of Jesus, direct us. And God forbid that I wrongly divide thy word. May thy will be done as we study today in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you'll notice in Revelation 4, verse 1, a door is opened and immediately John is caught up in the air. He's caught up and he sees the door. And, of course, he sees what we will experience literally. Now, he experienced it in the Spirit. In verses 4 and 5, we have the elders, the 24 elders, which represent the believers, the born-again ones. Now, in verses 6 through 8, before the throne there was a sea of glass. Now, that is tranquility, peace. However, you must note that out of the throne proceed lightning and thunder. And, of course, it is, in verse 5, a throne of judgment. Now, uh, however, now listen very carefully. The believers will be judged, but not as to whether they are saved or lost. That's not the judgment at all. But stewardship, whether we have earned, and I want you to underline earned. You say, Brother Green, I thought you said you couldn't earn your salvation. I still say you can't earn your salvation. But you must earn your reward. You cannot get a reward any other way. Redemption is free, the gift of God by grace, apart from any labor or anything that man can do except receive freely the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. And Christ is our redemption. But after we are redeemed, we are His workmanship created in Christ under good works. And faith without works is dead. Now, all believers work. Now then, if you work faithfully and labor faithfully, and if you're a good steward, you can receive a full reward. The Bible speaks of a full reward. And then, of course, there are those who suffer loss. They do works that are wood, hay, and stubble. Now, the thing to do if you're born again is to ask yourself the question, when I labor in the field of Christian service, when I do what I do in my church, in my community, am I doing it in the name of Jesus, or am I doing it in my own name? Am I doing it for His glory or my glory? His praise or my praise? Whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, there is a sea of glass, crystal like crystal, my. And in the midst of the throne, round about the throne, were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And the first beast was like a lion, the second beast like a calf, the third the face of a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within, and the rest, and they rest not, day and night, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now we find that in the first chapter. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Now I'm just going to give you a, an outline, a short summary of what will take place after the rapture during the approximate seven years following the rapture of the church, and the church will not go through any part of the great tribulation period. Now, when the church is raptured, the Antichrist will come on the scene in chapter 6, and of course, we will not go into that today at all, but he'll ride out on a beautiful white stallion. Then, of course, the things that follow are listed in 6, chapter 6. Now, in the rest of this chapter, the living creatures and the elders worship because of creation. Now, creation is of God. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean the devil didn't make this earth. The devil didn't make the sun, the moon, the stars. He didn't create 
God Almighty created. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. It is true that the devil is the God of this age. He is the prince of the power of the air. But that's what will, that's part of what will take place after the rapture. He will be cast out. He will be put into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone and will have peace on earth and goodwill toward men and the whole creation, the whole creation, the earth, vegetation, and the atmosphere and the solar system and everything will be delivered from the curse. Now, you may not agree with what I'm going to say. Now, our moon trips, and I'm not discussing pro or con, but there is one thing that the moon trips proved, that the moon is a gigantic planet of waste. The moon is one of the outer space bodies that is nothing but waste, waste, moon dust, and rocks, and so forth. Now, I believe, now you listen, you may not agree, one day we're told the moon will drip with blood, as it were blood. Now, you may not agree with what I'm going to say. I believe that the moon and every star, now of course I know that some of the stars are going to fall, and I don't want you wasting your postage writing in here to tell me that I don't, Mr. Green, uh, ask me, don't you know that some of the stars, yeah, the stars will fall from heaven. That's true. That's true. But I believe the moon and the planets out yonder in outer space, and of course we do not know how many are between here and the Father's house. Now they tell us it is 93 million miles to the sun. I don't know. I haven't been, and I don't have anything to measure it with right here on the desk. So I don't know. They say, and I accept it, I accept that it is approximately 93 million miles, and I'm sure they know. I don't. Well, who are you talking about? I'm talking about the scientists and the astrologers and the fellows that study uh, the stars and the sun, the moon. Now, here's what I'm saying. I believe there'd be no need for the sun and the moon. So everything, including the sun, the moon, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and all the rest of them will be turned into places of habitation by God's new creation. Now, it has been a long time. The only vacations that I've ever had really were the times, and I did leave this country seven times before I became physically unable to travel out of the country, I left this country seven times on missionary journeys. And those trips were the only vacations that I've had. This is the honest truth. For me to go somewhere and sit down and relax and take a week's vacation or even a weekend vacation, I've never done it in all the years of my ministry. I should have. I should have. I'm not against it. I should have. But I didn't. But I believe when we get into that eternal, uh, unending age, and you can't, I don't suppose you could refer to it as an age, because it is the ages of ages, eons of years, unending, unending eternity, that is, after all time has run its course, and the pearly white city comes down, I believe if we want to, in family groups, and groups will go over to the moon that will be beautiful and spend a, a, a little time, go over to Mars. You say, preacher, you're crazy. I'm glad I am. I'm glad I am. If this is insanity that I'm afflicted with, I'm glad I'm insane. Amen. Because I know some people who are not near as happy as I am. I know some. They don't believe anything. Now listen, I believe that every heavenly body will be delivered from the curse, the whole creation. God created the moon, God created the sun, God created the stars, God created the earth, God created everything. And one glorious day we're told that the whole creation will be delivered. And I believe the bride of Christ, the New Testament church, will have the opportunity and the privilege and we will travel throughout the entire, what well, as we know today, outer space and visit Mars and Jupiter 
and I believe the sun. You see, there'll be no need of the sun. There won't be any need. The sun warms the earth now. But when God gives us a new earth, it will be air-conditioned, centrally air-conditioned. You say, now, preacher, I know you're crazy. No, no. You see, they're talking about, now, they've been talking about it for years, uh, putting uh, some type of a canopy over our big cities and making them like our shopping malls. Now, they've done it. They have it in your city and in my city, Greenville. We have two or three, maybe four or five. I don't know how many malls that are air-conditioned. And you can walk down the corridors and you enter and you are in a comfortable atmosphere. Now, this the new earth will be air-conditioned. The Garden of Eden was. The Garden of Eden was air-conditioned. You know that. Because Adam and Eve, when they were placed there, were naked. They were in perfect comfort. They had no need for clothes. They had no need for a coat. They had no need for a hat. It didn't rain. It wasn't cold or hot. It was perfect air condition. Now listen, beloved. If you believe in God Almighty, and if you don't, God pity you. But if you believe in God Almighty, then you should not have any trouble believing what I've just said. God's going to give us a new heaven, a new earth, be air conditioned. Won't need the sun. So he'll turn the sun into a vacation land. He'll turn the moon into a vacation land. And Mars and Jupiter, and we'll, we'll uh, for about 400 trillion years, we'll just visit. Hallelujah. If you think we're going to heaven and sit down and fold our arms and listen to the angels sing, you just don't know your Bible. Now, I love singing, but not 400 billion years of it. I'd get tired. I want to move around a little bit. I've been moving around all my life, and I'm going to keep on moving. Amen. When I get up there now, in that celestial city. So, we find that they give glory and honor and thanks and so on. Now, that's in uh, the last part of that chapter. And chapter 5, and I'm just giving you a summary, just an outline. We have the seven-sealed book. And that book contains the terms of the redemption of this earth. I'm talking about the ground. The ground's cursed. I'm talking about vegetation. Vegetation's cursed. I'm talking about the animal kingdom. The animal kingdom's cursed. Everything is cursed. And so this seven seal book, sealed on the back side, and there was a strong angel proclaiming, Who is worthy? Open book. Who is able? Open seals. No man in heaven, in earth, under the earth, no one. And so, I wept much, John said. I wept, I cried, I wept, because no one was found. I had to look on the book, open the book. And then uh, the one of the elders said, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. See, the lion of the tribe of Judah. David's seed. You see, Jesus will sit on the throne of David. The church is not looking for a kingdom, we're looking for the bridegroom. We are the bride, and we'll be married in the sky, that is, in the air. We'll return with the bridegroom, who will be the king of the earth, and the king of Judah, the king of Israel, the whole of Israel, and we will reign with him in the millennium. And so, he's worthy. He has prevailed. And so in the midst of the throne, the full beast, a lamb, a lamb stood. A lamb slain, seven horns, and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the E-A-R-T-H, that spells earth. And that's where I am right now, in the earth. And so... We find that the Lamb took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, and uh, having every one of them harps and vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints, and they sung a new song. And here's what they sung. Listen now. Thou art worthy to take the book to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred, tongue, people, nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the 
E-A-R-T-H. You know what that spells? Earth. Now let me tell you, beloved, there are some symbols in Revelation. But when it says on the earth, it means on the earth. That is not symbolic. We're not reigning today. Believers have never reigned. Never. But glory to God, they will. Believers are in the minority today. If you do not participate of the things of the world, you can't get far in this world. But if you do participate in the things of the world, you can't get far with God. Now remember that. If you love the world, you cannot get far. You cannot be promoted spiritually. And if you don't love the world, you won't be promoted very much by the world. But I thank God that those of us who are born again know in our own individual heart that it pays to serve Jesus. All right? Worthy is the Lamb, verse uh, 12. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing and every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power unto him that sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped him that liveth forever and ever. Now, that is a, a, a general outline of what will occur during the first seven years, then of course, after the seven years, we will return with Jesus and he will destroy the Antichrist, that is, he'll put him in the pit, and destroy the armies of Antichrist. And this earth will be delivered from the curse and we will reign with him for 1,000 glorious years. If you're born again, You'll be there. If you're not, you'll be in the lake of fire. Father, in the name of Jesus, honor thy word, the shed blood, and save every soul that's under conviction. For Christ's sake, encourage and strengthen believers. We ask it in his name. Amen.